last week we talked about. I am what God says I am. Y'all remember that? And we said we're going to be with on that for a couple of weeks. I am what God says I am. And he told me to talk about that because a lot of saints don't know who they are. A lot of saints don't know what's in them. A lot of saints don't understand that the gift and the power of God that's in them. So he said, just bring it back to the remembrance. Bring it back to the remembrance, telling them who they are in me. And if you remember last week, we talked about being ambassadors for Christ. How many of you know you are ambassadors? And what does an ambassador do? He, he, an ambassador is a diplomatic figure in any government. When that, when that ambassador goes to another country, he represents that government. If, say, you're from the United States, you go to Japan, everything that you speak is as if the United States was speaking. So if we're an ambassador of Christ, everywhere we go, we lift up a standard of righteousness and holiness and of Christ Right? So what we say is the very thing Jesus would say. It holds the same merit. It holds the same authority. It holds the same power. But we got to know this. We got to know this. So when God gives us a, 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 a word to speak or to say, we have to know that he's going to back it because it's his word. We talked about being ambassadors. Y'all remember that? And we talked about the righteousness of God. That we, he made us righteous through his son Jesus Christ. And being righteous only means that we lifted up the standard of God. His righteousness, not our righteousness. Y'all get that? So we can't be right enough in our own. But it's through the faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ where we became righteous. By faith. Amen. Somebody said, who am I? Who am I? Look at uh, before I go there. Let, let me read this. Okay, I know. What I want to read this again, reiterate. Second Corinthians. Fifth chapter, 17 to 21. When you get there, say Jesus. I read this last week, but remember what I told you? We're going to deal with line upon line, precept upon precept. And the next script I go to is going to enhance this one that I'm reading. It's going to confirm what this one is saying. And it's going to give you a deeper depth of who we are. It's going to be so powerful how God showed you this. Is everybody there? It says, therefore, if any man, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath what? Given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world into himself, not imputing their trespasses uh, to them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled back to God. 21, for he had made him to be sin. Look at what he did. He had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin. He didn't even have a clue what sin was. Who knew no sin, that we might Y'all better catch this. Be made righteousness of God in him. So he, he, he was made sin for us that we won't have to live in sin. He took our place. Now watch this. Watch this scripture. Go to, with me to Romans 6. Romans 6. Romans 6. Is everybody there? Amen. Look at the third verse. No, 
I'm going to read down to possibly the 13th. <laughs> now watch this, y'all. This is some good stuff here. Some powerful stuff that show us and to encourage us of who we are in Christ. Now notice in, in Corinthians, he told us from the very beginning, we are new creatures. He became sin that we don't have to live in sin. He's given to us a ministry of reconciliation. So there's nothing that we go through that we can't be reconciled back to God. Okay? Because that's our ministry. Amen. Okay? Watch this. Romans 6, beginning at the third verse. It says, now listen to the language. He says, know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Look at this. Paul is saying, this is something we need to know. See, that's why we ask the question, who am I? Because it's certain things as a believer we need to know. And he's telling us right here, he says, you need to know. And, and, and not knowing something is just simply not being ignorant of it. When you don't know something, you're ignorant. Watch this. Ignorant is not such a negative word. It's just a root. It's a word that comes from knowing. Knowledge. So if you don't know something, you have a lack of knowledge, so you're ignorant of that truth. So Paul says, this is something you need to know. That when you, how many of you receive Christ? Come on now. How many of you receive Christ? You're a Christian. You're born again Christian. This scripture says you were baptized. When you accept Jesus Christ, that's your baptism. That's your first baptism. Not water baptism, but baptism into being a Christian. This is what he's talking about. He says, you got to know that when you were baptized into Jesus Christ, you were baptized into his death. Watch this. Remember when Jesus Christ died. Watch this. And he went into the ground, into the grave, into the tomb. Y'all remember this, right? right? I guess I'm going to be teaching a little bit, but I'm going to preach. <laughs> but watch this. The same way Jesus Christ went down into the grave, into the tomb, we did too. Y'all got to see what the word said. It says, we were baptized into Jesus Christ. We were baptized into his death. But you got to know this. So watch this. Death is to the world the final answer. It's the final, period. You don't come back. But Jesus shot the world. Jesus shot the world. He came back from death to live for yet forever. There were some other people raised from the dead, but they didn't live forever. They eventually died again. But Jesus Christ's death, they thought was final. But it wasn't final. Just like your death. Watch this. What was final with Jesus Christ's death? He went down as Jesus and came up as Christ. Come on, y'all. Watch this. The death, when we be born into Christianity, that old you, that old Bethany, that old Brenda, that old Pat, that old faith, die. Y'all got to get this. So that old character, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, raised that old Rayanna die. And you got to look at her as being dead. So watch this. If you consider yourself as dead, death has no more dominion over you. Death has no more dominion over you. Sin has no more dominion over you. Because when Jesus Christ went down, he died, I died with him. But watch this. When he rose up again, I rose with him a new hour back now. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. So you, 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 you're not the same person. You're new in Christ. So that's, that attitude that you used to have got to be dead. You got to consider that thing is dead. Don't let it come back up. It'll try to come back up out of the grave. You know how they did in Thriller. They reached their hands out of the ground and they tried to come back up. But when you see that old person come back up, you got to 
cast that devil out. Don't let that old attitude come back. Don't let that old disposition come back. Watch this. Don't let that old slowfulness come back. Don't let that old uh, 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 not not just being committed to God come back. Kill that thing. Let it stay down, bird. Paul said, this is something you need to know. That. The third verse says, therefore, we, we the believers, are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life. Somebody said, who am I? Who am I? I ain't that same person, y'all. That other person is dead and buried. But when Jesus rose and I, and I uh, 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 submitted my life to Jesus Christ, I was raised from the dead with him. But I'm ready. Watch this, y'all. This is going to blow somebody's mind right here. You ain't Christ, but you like Christ. Uh-oh. You not Christ, but you like Christ. That's, that's what a Christian is. Christ like. That's what a Christian is. So how would you, Jesus deal with a situation? That's how we need to be dealing with it. How would Jesus respond to a situation? That's how we need to respond to a situation. We can't respond our old fleshly carnal way. If you see that come up, you got to deal with it. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Stay with me. He says, we should walk in the newness of life. Fifth verse. For if we have been planted together in his likeness. How many of you know you've, you've been planted together in his likeness? It says, of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Do y'all hear what he's saying? If we understand the truth, mother, that we died like he died. We shall, we shall receive that we're in his likeness, watch this, of his resurrection. Mm, mm, mm. That's some good stuff right there. If we realize that we have resurrection power, come on now, nobody in hell can stop us from being prosperous in God. No situation can stop you from growing in God. Because why? You have the resurrection power in you now. When Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, he was raised, the Bible says, with all power. And he told the disciples, now I've been raised with all power, now I'm going to give you the power. Go ye therefore and preach the gospel to everybody in this world. Just and, and laying hands on the sick and they're going to recover and, and open it up blind eyes and eyes. And he said, if you touch any dead, they think it ain't going to even harm you. Why? Because I got resurrection power now. The Bible says you gotta like it yourself. You gotta think like that. When the enemy comes in like a flood, allow that anointing of the Holy Spirit to lift up the standard. The standard in you is righteousness. The standard in you is reconciliation. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your home. Don't let the devil steal your kids. Don't let the devil steal your marriage. Don't let the devil steal your sons, your daughters. No, he has no authority. You got the authority. When Jesus was raised from the dead, man, God, God said he, he sat on the right hand of God. When he is sitting on the right hand of God, making an intercession for us every day. Now watch this. The Bible says you and I are seated in heavenly places. In the spirit, we're right there with him. But see, we've been so uh, culturalized and worldly uh, uh, the world is trying to form our thoughts, our process, and the way we think and the way we do things. And see, when you get saved, you can't think like the world thinks. Yes. Everything the world has to offer us, we shouldn't have to. We shouldn't receive it. Amen. And it's not like you're trying to uh, 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 be greater than anybody. That's not what we're saying. But what we are, the Bible says, we are chosen. We are royal. And he told the children of Israel, watch this. He said, you are a special people unto me. He told them, you're special. No other people is going to get the, the fringe benefits you get, Israel. Huh? And that's just like 
they believe it. Nobody can get My wife said it the other day, I think it was, it was me, I think she said the Bible say, how there's no other creature on this earth, on this earth, that got it like we got it. Oh, y'all not hearing me? You ever heard a dog talk? You ever, you ever hear a fish sing? Come on. You ever hear, you ever hear a, a monkey go to work? Or what? Yeah, they do work on the little, the little machine thing, right? <laughs> but but who, who ruling over when they're going to work? Man. Am I right? <laughs> so God has instilled in us, the human being, the most precious gift of all, which was his breath. We're royal, y'all. We're special. We're the apple of his eye. Now watch this. I'm sure he loved all the other creation that he made. But nobody has it like we have. Now watch this. That's just mankind. What about the ones that are in Christ? Mm -mm -mm. Y'all ain't catch that. Whatever. What? Y'all hear what I said? That's, he loved the whole world. But a Christian, man, we got the icing on the cake. Cherry on top. And maybe a little custard in between. Hey! Woo! Don't give me that. I ain't even breakfast neither. Y'all better stop. Woo! Mother, watch this. Brother Ernie, he loved us so much, man. He put himself in us. But sometimes the cares of the world, the things that's going on around us, and they get on our nerves, and we get flustered, we get tired, we get humiliated, we get embarrassed, we get, you know, we let all these emotions come upon us when all we got to remember is who we are. If you remember who you are, man, man can't nothing stop you from smiling, can't nothing stop you from having joy, man, can't nothing stop you from being at peace and at rest, because we know we're in Christ. The one with resurrection power. Stay with me. We've been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, he always see how he always said, you, you need to know it though. He said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be what? These, y'all not hearing what I said. The body of sin may be what? Destroyed. When you gave your heart to the Lord, that body of sin that you was housing has been destroyed. Now we now the scripture is very plain, very, very plain. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. But you're not living in sin. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You may commit a sin here and there, you repent from it, keep it moving, but your lifestyle is not a sinful lifestyle. When you give your heart to Jesus Christ, your whole lifestyle is changed. Do y'all hear that? Yes. Look what Paul said. He said that henceforth we should not serve sin. That's why, see, you've been changed. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You've been changed. You've been born again. You've been rejuvenated. You're another creature. So you don't have to serve sin. Am I the only one happy about that? I ain't got to serve sin. Do y'all hear that? Sin all around you. Sin knocking at your front door. But you don't have to answer. What? Man, I was getting removed somewhere. I ain't going to get it. Lord help me. Whoa. That was a close call. I'm going to do it like this. You know how they knock on your door? <laughs> you just got it. Knock on your door. Man, just act like that's sin. Let me keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. If you ain't talking Jesus Christ and him crucified, <laughs> funny, it's funny, Jeff. Woke up this morning. Was it yesterday or yesterday? Went to the front porch, looked on Nubian News. What the world? Nubian News on my doorstop. They ain't never get, left no Nubian newspaper on my doorstop. I wish I could have called him at the door. Say, Jesus Christ is Lord. 
Oh man, Nubian news. <laughs> oh my God. Y'all with me, we get ready to go somewhere. I'm not gonna hold you too long. Come on, watch this. It says, for he that is dead is free from sin. See, if you if you consider yourself dead, the old man dead, you free from sin. See what I'm saying? For, what, what does the scripture say? For the wages of sin is what? That's why I say you've been free from the, the law of sin and death. Watch this. Romans 8 and 1 just came to my spirit. It says, For there is there now, there is, for there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. Huh? For the law, watch this, for the law of sin and death. We're not, we're not subject to that anymore. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Let me read this so y'all can see that this is some good stuff right here. Romans, Romans 8, right fast. Romans 8. Look what it says. 8 and 1. Y'all there? One page over. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, we under that law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus, have made me free from the law of sin and what? So death has no more dominion over us. Sin has no more dominion over us. If you're walking in the law of Jesus Christ, it says, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk after, not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. How many of you walking in the Spirit? Amen. Come on, y'all. How many of you walking in the Spirit? Amen. So sin has no more reign over you, nor does death have any reign over you. We walk in the newness of life. Go back to six right fast. Everybody there? Amen. Look at 8, verse 6, chapter 6, verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. If it has no more dominion over him, it has no dominion over you. Watch this, y'all. So, so things in your life that's trying to die, you got power over it. You got dominion over it. Whether it's relationship, whether it's children, whether it's your finances trying to die, whether it's your, your home trying to be this, whatever it is that's trying to die, the scripture says you got dominion over it. Mm, mm, mm. That's good right there, Luis. So, so anything that's coming up against me that's trying to take my joy, Trying to kill my joy. Trying to kill my peace. Trying to kill my happiness. Trying to kill my commitment to God. I got dominion over it. You got dominion over it. Don't let the devil steal your joy, y'all. Don't let the devil steal your praise. That's why there's no way in the world we come in this building Sunday after Sunday and we don't give them praise. Huh? <sighs> no way. I gotta give him praise, I gotta give him glory. Not just when I come in the house of God, but when I'm home, I'm praising. Well, yes. Come on, y'all. When I'm in my car, I, I gotta praise in my mouth. Yes. That's just the relationship I have with him. I gotta praise in my mouth at all times. Yes. But you gotta know this. This is who you are. You're a life-giving being. You're a life-giving spirit. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. It says, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, died no more, death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin. How many times? But in that he liveth, and he liveth unto God. Likewise, here we go. This is where he was telling us now. You see what Jesus Christ did? He died unto sin once. And didn't, didn't the Bible tell us to take on the mind of Christ? We need to think like him. Watch this what it says. This next verse says, likewise, in other words, you do the same. You follow the same principle. 
You follow the same dialogue. It says, likewise, reckon ye unto also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Do y'all hear what that's saying? Reckon yourself likewise to be dead to sin. Just like Jesus Christ did. He says, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's where we get our life from. Through Jesus Christ. Reckon yourselves to be dead from sin. But now you got to remember that you have the same anointed on you that Jesus Christ had. It says, indeed, but, be, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin reign in your mortal body, that ye shall obey it in the lust thereof. Y'all hear that? Let not sin reign in your mortal body. That's this body we in now, y'all. Sin should not be dominating us. Amen. Disobedience should not be dominating us. Come on, y'all. The world system should not be dominating us. Do y'all hear me? <laughs> Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, but yet that ye shall obey in the lust of their own. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Do y'all hear what that is saying? Do not yield your members as unrighteousness. How many of you know what your members are? Go ahead. Yeah, you can talk to me about that. Go ahead. What is your member? Parts of your body. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? No, do y'all hear what the word is saying? So watch this. Your body may be trying to tell you you're sick, you're not well. Don't yield that member. You see what I'm saying? Don't have dominion over that member. Do not yield your members, your body, your thoughts, process to be in agreement with what was not the word of God. Amen. Yes. See what I'm saying? If we don't yield our members, if watch this, lust, that's a part of our members. Come on. Yes. Worldly desires, that's a part of our members. Amen. Come on, come on. Fornication, that's a part of our members. Adultery, that's a, those are the things we can't allow our body to yield. Our members to yield. Now watch this. Let's hit them spiritually. Doubt. Unbelief. Come on. Jealousy. Envy. Strife. Malice. Don't allow that stuff to reign. That's a part of your member. Don't yield it. Kill it. Come on, y'all. Y'all walk around here and don't even know you 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 just cold other devil killers. I mean the devil don't stand a chance, but you gotta know it. The devil don't stand a chance. Everything that the devil tried to put on us, man, we have the authority over it. We have the authority over it. So the question is, who am I? What has Jesus given me? What has Jesus given me? What has he put in me? What has he bestowed upon you? Ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? You need to look at yourself and in the mirror and say, I'm more than a conqueror. Yes. Come on, I'm always above and I'm never beneath. Yes. I'm the head and not the tail. Yes. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yes. Come on, y'all. I'm successful. Yes. I'm prosperous. Yes. I'm not mediocre, but I'm a royal priesthood. See, you got to talk to yourself. You got to tell yourself these things. You got to remind yourself of who you are. Because if we deal with the world, Sister Sister Cheryl, they're going to tell us we can't make it. They're going to tell us we're nothing. They're going to tell us that we're never going to be nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
But you got to know who you are in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? That new creature is successful. That new creature is holy. That new creature is sanctified. That new creature has the mind of Christ. That new creature is, come on, y'all. That new creature is always above and never beneath. Romans said we just have the light mind, the likeness of Jesus Christ. And it says that we should think like him. We should walk like him. We should talk like him. We should bind and loose like him. Nothing that comes up against us that we, that we, if we know who we are, we can have authority over it. What we said last week in Genesis, God said, listen, when he made us, he made us male and female. He made it in them male and female, and then he made us as one. He said he would withhold no good thing from us. He says he's given to us the power to create. If your circumstance looks dim, create a brighter circumstance. Yes, yes. With your mouth. Death and life is where, y'all? In the power of what? Watch this. It's not in the power of my tongue for you. But it's in the power of my tongue for me. But it's in the power of your tongue for you. So I can see, that's why the world can say what they want to say. It don't bother me. Because I know the power, left life and death is in the power of my tongue for me and my house. Yes. So no matter what the devil is trying to show me, trying to tell me, I don't receive it because what's coming out of my mouth is going to create and frame my word. Yes. Yes. God said, let there be light. What came on the scene? Light. God said, let there be the permanent. What came on the scene? The permanent. God said, let the sea become what came to see. Everything that he opened his mouth to create, he created, it came to pass. Yes. Everything that you have Holy Ghost boldness enough to create in your mouth, it'll come to pass. Yes. Because, because why? You're made in his likeness. Yes. Yes. That's who you are. And watch this. I love this the title for the next couple of weeks. I am what God says I am. Yes. Not what the system says I am. Not what my neighbor says I am. Come on, y'all. Not with the mortgage company, because the mortgage company probably said, you can't even get this house. Come on. But I ain't that. God said, I'll supply all your needs according to what? My riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. Somebody says, I am. am. What well, God says, I am. God One more scripture, we're going to go. First Peter 2 and 9, you don't have to go there. I've, said, I've quoted it many times. I'm sure you know it says, but ye are a chosen. This is who we are, y'all. Listen. First Peter 2 and 9 says, but ye are a chosen generation. But ye are a royal chief, priesthood and holy nation of peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who've called you out of darkness. Come on, y'all. You're light. You're light. Yes. You're not darkness. Who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. Yes. So we're light giving beings, mom. Everywhere we go, light should shine. Yes. In our lifestyle, in our talk, in our speech, yes. in our commitment, it should be a light. Somebody yes. should see a light in our lives, y'all. Yes. Yes. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. So, whatever God says we are, whoever God says we are, that's who we are. Don't let the world system, don't let your circumstance, because your circumstance will try to dictate to you who you are or what's in you. But if you know you got the spirit of God in you, the devil can't win. Watch this. He can knock it down. But thank you, Donnie McClurkin. We fall down. But we get up. We fall down. But we get up. How many of you know that's true? You don't have to stay down. Yes. Amen. So I submit to you today and I declare to you today that you are the head and not the tail. You're always above and never beneath. You are more than a conqueror. Yes. You're the lender and not the borrower. Yes. You're the healed and not the sick. You're the rich and not the poor. Amen. You are the righteousness of God. Yes. 
You are in him, watch this, and he is in you. That's an awesome testimony right there. You are in Christ, and Christ is in you. Is that all right? Yes. You are blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. I am blessed. And highly favored. And highly Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody says, I am. I am. What God says. What God I, am. I am. Father, in the name of Jesus. Anyone under the sound of my voice today that heard you speak today, if they don't know you in a part of their sins, this is their opportunity to get to know you. And not only that, but get to know who they are in you. For you said in your word, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart, as in the day of provocation. But he said in Romans, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So today, I say this is your day. If you don't know this Jesus Christ we've been talking about today, if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, this is your opportunity to get to know him. Is there one? Is there two? Is there three? That would say, Lord, I yield my life to you. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my trespasses. I want to be more like you. I want you to come into my heart and be my Savior, my Lord. Is there one? So this is what I want you to do. Without stretched hands, I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come before you. Just as, I am. Just as I am. I believe, I believe that, Jesus that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Of the living God. I, believe that he died, I believe that he died and you raised him from the dead just for, me. just for me. I make that Jesus, make that Jesus the, Christ, the Christ, the Lord of my life. Of my life. From, this on, from this moment on, I yield my will, yield my will to, your will. to your will. Thank you, Father. Thank you. For hearing me, for saving me, for delivering me, for setting me free. I'm yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you believe it, give God a praise. Come on. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise. At this, at this time, I hope we open up the doors of the church. Amen. If anybody's looking for a church home and um well, but let me say this: we don't we don't beg, borrow, or steal. We don't beg anybody, but we open up the doors. And if God so lay on your heart that this is your uh, place to of worship and where you need to be, the doors are open right now. Amen. So, if there's not anyone at this time, it's offering time. Somebody say it's offering time. Come on, say it like you mean it. It's awesome time. Amen. Amen. So we want to pray that whatever God lays on your heart, that you will be a giver of that. Now watch this. The Bible says in the book of Malachi, bring, all, bring ye all your tithes into the storehouse. Amen. And it says if you bring your tithes and you give your tithes to the house of God, the Bible says he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you would not have room enough to receive. Amen. Now what a tithe is, if you don't know, a tithe is just a tenth of your increase. Whatever God has blessed you with is a tenth of that. Watch this. God bless you with a hundred dollars. All he asks for is what? You got 90 left. That's what that's that's to me. He's looking out for you. But what he's saying is just give me a tip so I can bless the house of God. I can bless the ministry. I can bless the people of God. Amen. So if you have your tithes, bring your tithes to be in this, this middle um, tithe box. And if you have your offering, amen, you bring your offering to the side, the side place. Amen. 
You want to talk to him? You want to tell him something?